Google Drive is a great place to firstly store information, store documents, store spreadsheets, and share information with other people, but Notion may actually be a better option. If you're interested, stick around for the rest of the video because I'm going to do a comparison between the two. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. You can see straight off the bat, I don't actually use Google Drive at all anymore, so I've actually had to create two documents for this demonstration. I used to use it until I started using Notion, and then I didn't really see much of a point. So I am slightly biased there, but when you start creating documents in Google Drive, you can create them through the whole Google Suite. So Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Forms, etc. Now, when you're in Notion, it's actually slightly different. So instead of it being a document, it's a page. And that page could be just inside of a page. So you can have a page in a page, or you could have a page in a database. So whereas in Google Drive, you would search for the document, in Notion, if they are in pages, you would search the database for the name or any of the related information for that doc slash page. Or you can file them and folder them and sort them in any way you want because that's how Notion works. One of the biggest reasons I think a lot of people use Google Drive is for the shareability of documents. So you can work on documents at the same time as someone else. When you go into the document in Google Drive and you click on the document, you can see you can either copy the link and send it to someone for them to either view, edit or comment on. And you can change the accessibility. You can then preview information, delete information. But the main benefit is that when you're editing a document or you're working on a document with someone else, you can share it with them. Now, when you go into the document, you can actually share it from the document side. So when you go into the document, you can see you have the big share button at the top right of the screen. And then you can send an email so it will invite that person to work on that document with you. Now, when we're in Notion, it works pretty much the same way. You can see this is the Google Drive versus Notion page, and I have shared this page with another one of my accounts. So you can see I have two people up there, and you can share this publicly, just like in Google Drive, as you want. But in this case, you can actually index Notion pages for websites if you want to, but that's a whole nother conversation. If you don't want everything to be shared, you can go into the specific page. So in this case, I'm going to go to the page in the database and I can share that page. So my top level page, my Google Drive versus Notion can be hidden, but I can share the page inside of it, sheet one. In those share options, I can add a person to the page as a guest. I can copy the link and send it to them. And depending on the settings I've put on the page, I can either let them comment, edit, duplicate or give them full access. My sidebar, you can actually also see that I have a shared page. So I've shared this page with another user, i.e. myself in this case, but I've shared this page with another user, but this page is stored in my private space, so it's shared. If it was in my workspace, then it would come under the workspace banner because it would be shared to everyone in my workspace. And that can get a little bit complicated when you move up using different accounts and different plans in Notion. But for this simple comparison, all you need to know is that you can share by copy the link and paste it to wherever or type in the email to whoever you want to share the doc with. When you are working inside a Google Doc, maybe you want to leave a comment or a message or anything like that inside when you're working. And in Google Docs, you can highlight a word, add a comment, and then the comment will sit at the side of the document. Then when you've finished with the document, you can click on the tick mark and essentially that resolves the either issue, the comment, the edit, whatever you want. You could also add a comment to a specific line rather than a specific word. And you can at mention anyone you want and it will bring up a list of emails or you could just search for someone and you can basically mention them. So give them a notification that you want them to have a look at whatever you've highlighted. And again, in Notion, it works pretty much the same way. You can highlight any text which is inside a block and add a comment. You can either use the shortcut control shift M because I'm on Windows on Mac, it's command. But when you add in the comment, you can see you have the yellow highlight as to where the comment is. At the side of the page, you get a little comment box. Now, this doesn't show the comment, but when you click on it, you can see the resolved conversations and the open conversations. And the number will represent how many comments there are in the open conversations. 
when you're finished, you can just resolve it. The little icon will disappear, but it will be saved in the Resolved Conversations tab. Instead of just commenting on a word, you can highlight the whole block or comment on the whole block, and then it works exactly the same as when you're in Google Docs, and it's just going to leave the comment on the block rather than the word. If we were to then add a comment on the word, you can see that number has gone to two, because now there are two open comments. One of them has me tagged in, which gives me a reminder, and the other one is just a comment. I can resolve both of them, and then it disappears but they're still there saved in the resolve section. Moving down in the sidebar, you can see you have a recent accessed area in Google Drive. And what this is showing you is basically the documents you've recently accessed. The only real use for this is when you're trying to find something that you recently accessed, but in most cases you should know where you've saved it. So I personally wouldn't use this much, but when you're in Notion, you can do the same thing add a last edited, last created, or you could add a reminder in the file. So if it's in a database, you can add a reminder and you could set that reminder whenever you want, change the date, change the time, and then that will send a reminder to the person, to you, anything like that. So it's a little bit further on from just what you've recently added, what you've recently edited. You could add a formula to work out the day that you need to add the reminder for, but when you're actually inside that page, you can see all of that information at the top just by viewing the properties. Now, if you have loads of different files and documents and things like that, and you want to sort them by recently edited, you can because it's a database. So we're going to go into sort, then we can go into sort, sort by edited and either ascending or descending. So I basically replicated the recent tab in Google Drive in Notion, but you have full customization of how you want to see things, what you want to see things, where you want to see them, etc. When it comes to storing the documents, I briefly went over it earlier, but in Google Drive, you can create folders, which are very typical of most storage systems. You have a folder, you put the document in the folder, and that is it, nice and sorted. If you're like me a couple of years ago and you have folders and folders and folders and documents all over the place, you end up searching so much to try and find that document you were actually looking for. Now in Notion, it doesn't work the same way with folders. You could set up a system that works exactly the same way and have pages inside pages inside pages. Or what you could do is tag the page. So instead of creating a traditional folder, you could tag the document with a specific tag, whether that's a select property, multi-select property, relation, it could be done in lots of different ways. But when you tag the document, you can filter a view for that stuff. So if you have home related documents, you can put the home tag on there. Work related documents, you can have the work tag on there. And you can create whatever tag you want. So instead of having to sift through folders to find the document, all you need to do is just look at the view. Or again, you can filter for it and you can decide where everything is stored. When we go into Google Drive, you have what's called a starred section, which is basically just things you're commonly going to, commonly accessing, or something that's really important. And in Notion, it works pretty much the exact same way, except it's not called starred, it's called favorites. And when you go into the sidebar, the favorites, whatever document it is, it will go at the top. When you remove it from the favorites, it removes it from that access point. Now, there are loads of different possibilities you can do with Notion when it comes to sorting and relating information. And I'm not going to go through loads of that stuff now because that's not what this video is about. But when you are searching for files, folders, documents, and things like that, you can use something in Notion called a relation. So you can relate a document to another document. So if you know, for example, you have a spreadsheet that is directly related to a document and you need to go backwards and forwards between the two, instead of going into the doc, going out of the doc into the sheet, out of the sheet into the doc, like you would do in Google Drive or have them both up, in Notion, you can have them related to one another. This means that when you're inside it, you can just bounce backwards and forwards when you need to. Something else that could also be really useful is you can have your database of all of your files, docs, and folders. You can copy that link and you can paste it inside of the document or sheet you're currently working on. This means you don't have to go back to your files to search for anything because you can have it inside of each document, each sheet you're working on. 
Now I'm just scratching the surface of some things you could do and Notion allows you to customize things exactly how you want. So how you choose to sort, how you choose to view information is up to you. These are just a couple of examples. In Google Drive, when you delete something by accident, maybe it goes into your trash folder. And when you go into the trash folder, you can restore that document as if you never deleted it. And in Notion, again, it works exactly the same way. When you delete something, it goes to your trash folder. You go into the trash folder and then resolve it. And then it will now be available. I'm going to try and be as biased as possible when talking about storage. But looking at Google Drive storage, obviously, there are different paid tiers for the amount of storage that you have. So if you store a lot of documents, a lot of sheets, a lot of information, you're obviously going to have to buy the bigger packages. In Notion, because you don't actually need files, because what you're essentially doing is creating the file inside of Notion, the free plan is completely unlimited. So you don't have to pay for any storage. Let me just say that again. You don't have to pay for any storage if you're creating the files inside of Notion. And if you are adding files, i.e. PDFs or anything like that, if you're on the free plan, you can add as many files as you want up to five megabytes. Or you could go to the personal pro plan, which is paid, and then you can have an unlimited size file added into Notion, which basically means you have unlimited storage. Personally, for me, I don't actually attach that many files because most of the work I do, i.e. are on Google Docs or would be equivalent of Google Docs, Google Sheets or equivalent of Google Sheets. And I would just do that natively into Notion. I just add text blocks, add heading blocks, add databases, and I do all of that information inside of Notion. So I don't have to pay for any of my storage. Now, obviously, there are limitations with the types of files that you can access into Notion. You can embed PDF files in Notion. I've done a video on that. You can embed other files into Notion. You can attach files into Notion. You can upload files into Notion. So you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to storage, and you don't really have to pay for anything. Now, in my case for YouTube, I have a lot of video files, which obviously are quite large files. And what I've actually done is just bought an external hard drive a two terabyte external hard drive for like 50, 60 pounds, which is the same as having two terabytes on Google Drive. But instead of that being for one year, it's never ending until the the drive is full. But because I'm only saving video files on there, it's hardly full. And I've got loads of space left because all of the other files are on Notion. If you're interested to learn a little bit more about Notion and what you can do with Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.